Welcome back to another lecture where I introduce bite-sized topics related to coding in Apex and Visual Force. SOCL or Salesforce Object Query Language is Salesforce's official object query language. It's based on SQL, one of the most popular database programming languages ever. In a nutshell, SOCL is just a tool that lets you access anything about any record in your Salesforce database. It can be used in both Apex and Visual Force. Fantastic stuff for admins to learn. Of course, it's really important for anyone wanting to code. In this lecture, I'll introduce the basics of SOCL statements, including keywords and concepts like select, from, limit, order by. We'll also talk about basic where conditions and operators. There are two required elements to any SOCL statement, select and from. Using select, we can select fields you want to retrieve data from within your Salesforce database. From lets you select the object you want to pull the fields from. For example, I want to pull out all the names and email addresses from the contact object. I would use the following SOCL statement. Select name email from contact. That's easy, right? So wouldn't it be nice if we execute the query and look at the results? We can do that from the developer console or the Salesforce workbench. With both these tools, you can create and run queries. Workbench is great because it gives you access to a whole bunch of tools beyond SOCL development. The developer console is great too. We'll use the developer console for this lecture. You can get to the developer console from your name and developer console. We can construct our query here. Select name, comma, email from contact and let's execute the query. We have the results showing us the name and emails of all the contacts with the number of rows your query resulted in. A few things to note here that might not be obvious on first glance. All objects and fields are referenced by their Salesforce API name. Note that custom object and custom field API names end with double underscore C. Just like when you use them in your formula fields. You will separate each of these fields that you want to pull data from with a comma. With very few exceptions, which I'll make sure to point out, SOCL is not case sensitive. Now that we have established that SELECT and FROM are the only required keywords in a SOCL statement, let's look at some of the optional but very useful other SOCL keywords. We'll start with LIMIT. Because Salesforce is a multi-tenant environment, it would be bad form to run the query above. Because you may have many thousands of records and it could take lot of processing power to run. Though it isn't required, you often want to use the limit keyword, especially if you're just learning SOCL. This is handy because it limits how many records come back. You guessed it. This would pull up only three records. Let's talk about another keyword, offset. This keyword lets you skip records. This query would pull up only three records after skipping the first 10. I would like to make a small note here. The maximum offset is 2000 records. If you happen to request an offset greater than 2000, you'll get an error. There's another interesting keyword called order by. This is a handy little section of SOCL because it specifies exactly how you want your resulting records to be sorted. Pretty easy really. Just indicate the way you want things to be ordered and it should be done. If you don't indicate an order, then by default, SOCL will assume you want ascending order, but you can also specify descending order. Select name, email, from, contact, order by, name, descending, email, limit 3. This code first sorts by name in descending order, and then within records with the same name, it will then sort by email in ascending order. Each field in the order by clause has its own sort order. Because we didn't specify any particular order for the email field, it is by default giving an ascending order. So again, this is fun, but it's still not all that helpful. Let's look at a more common scenario. What if we wanted to select the names and email addresses from the contact object where the first name of the person equals Jane and the last name equals Smith? For that, we need to use another keyword to define our database query. Where first name equals Jane and last name equals Smith. 
When filtering data in our text fields, surround your filtered value with single quotes. We can also use multiple fields in a where statement. It's very common you want to filter by more than one field in your socket statements. There are a few ways to do this, depending on what you're filtering for. This example uses the AND keyword between the two fields we wanted to filter by. In effect, we are asking Sockle to find all contacts where both the following are true. First name equals Jane and last and name equals Smith. Using multiple fields in a where statement. What if we weren't sure how Jane spelled her last name and wanted to find both Smith with an I and Smith with a Y? We can do this using the OR keyword. Take a look at the following query. Select ID from contact where last name equals Smith or last name equals Smith with a Y. Another way to look at multiple values within the same field is using the IN keyword. Select ID from contact where last name IN Smith, comma, Smith. It allows us to define a list of values by placing them inside parentheses and separated with commas. The two where statements would produce the same result set, but you can probably see the advantages in this way of doing things. In the second example, we don't have to restate the field by which we are filtering, which saves time and space in our code. Imagine that we are looking for all the contacts that were in western states. Using in is going to save you a lot of typing and have the added bonus of it being easier to read. But back to our original data question. We don't want to find just any old Smith or Smith, but only with the first name of Jane. How do we do that? Pretty simple really. Where first name equals Jane and last name in Smith, comma, Smith. In summary, I hope that you made it through this intro and are starting to get familiar with Sockle. I'm having fun introducing you to Sockle. Let's summarize what we know so far. Sockle is used to pull data out of Salesforce object, also known as query the database. Like Apex, for the most part, Sockle is not case sensitive. There are only two required fields for every Sockle statement, select and from. Select lets you pick which fields we want to pull data from. From lets you select what object you're pulling from. There are a number of optional keywords, including limit, order by, and where. Limit lets you control how many records do you want to pull. Order by lets you control the sort order, ascending or descending. And where lets you control how you want to filter the results. Within where clauses, we can use number of operators, including equals, in, and or. In is used to filter by comma separated list of values. AND is used to combine multiple filters, where both sides of the AND must be true. OR is used to combine multiple filters, where only one side of the OR needs to be true. We are officially at the end of part 1 of our introduction to Sockle, and I hope you found it easy to follow and left you wanting more. In the next lecture, we'll talk about more Sockle concepts, like how to pull data from related standard and custom objects using dot notation, and subqueries. It's going to get really interesting.